On section um, 1.4 in geometry, we're dealing with angle measures. The measure of the angles is basically we're going to be, you're going to be using your protractor, but in class is when we're going to discuss how to use it exactly. Uh, an angle is made out of two different rays. So this is a ray. A ray basically is a part of a line. That means one end point is, um, one end is a point and the other one is continuous and that's considered a ray. So if we put these two rays together, with a non-collinear, again, that was, I think, section 1-1 one, one vocabulary. Non-collinear means basically not on the same line. So anywhere, okay, we take that point, we put another ray, we get what is called an angle. This is an angle. The angle, you have two sides. This side is called AC, and this side is called AB. Basically, you just name the line. Um, this right here is very important. This is called the vertex. Now, the vertex is very important when it comes to naming these. So there's two different ways, there's actually three different ways of naming an angle. Sometimes all three ways are not always there, so you have to see what they have available. So here, for instance, we have a 4 in there. So if there's a 4 in, uh, underneath there, you can just simply say angle 4 to make it easy. But also, you can just name it after its vertex, angle A. But sometimes the vertex shares different angles, okay? So that means if I had an angle going this way, then I, angle A could either be this angle or this angle. In that case, and then this has no number, in that case, if you have to do that, then the next thing you need to do is um, name it by the, the three points that make up the angle. The only catch is the middle point always needs to be the vertex. So I, it doesn't matter if I do B, A, C, or C, A, B, as long as what's in the middle, A, the vertex. So it doesn't matter what order these are again, but as long as the vertex goes in the middle, I'll name it. So there's two ways. I can name it by the vertex, or I can name it by three sides with the vertex in the middle. So don't forget to go ahead and write this down if you haven't done so. Pause it and write it down, and also add your vocabulary. Before we get into class, um, you should uh, overview Protractors, page 32. Some of you guys have used Protractors before and some have it. We're going to go exactly how to go, how to use it in class so that I have the Protractor and I can show you and we can work on things together. But basically, a Protractor helps you measure the degrees. And a degree will help you classify what kind of angle. For example, if it goes straight up, if I put a protractor here, this number right here would be 90. A 90 degree angle is considered a right angle. The acute angle just means that it's less than, this is the sign less than, 90 degrees. So anything that goes this way is an acute angle. Same thing that anything that goes this way is an obtuse angle. So anything bigger than 90 degrees, for example, angle C is bigger than 90 degrees, it's there called obtuse. So right is 90, acute is less than 90, and obtuse is greater than 90. The last thing we're going to be going over is the congruent angle. Congruent is a term that we've heard last section, basically means equal. So congruent angles are basically angles that are of the same degree. So if this is 25 degrees, this is 25 degrees. So this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. So, I can't label these angle M. See, I can't just say angle M equals angle M, then you're not quite sure which one. So I have to use all three to label it. Um, with, but we have to make sure that the term vertex, the vertex, is always in the middle. So in this case, I named it angle NMP. This should be a P. NMP. Okay? And it's equal, or because it has a squiggly, it's now called congruent to angle QMR, QMR. So it doesn't matter which way as long as what's in the middle, the vertex. Alright, so now we're going to example and then again you're going to pause and write down the examples and fill in with me. So in this case it's asking us to name all angles that have B as a vertex. So let's locate B. This is B right here. So we're going to name the angles that have B. 
So actually, if you see, there are four angles. Let me change markers real quick. Here's an angle right here. Okay, it's kind of an ugly angle, but okay. Here's one, here's one, and here's one. So now we have to name all four of those angles. These three are pretty easy, because I can just name them by the, the numbers, do you see? So I can say angle five, angle six, and angle seven. Now because this vertex shares with four different angles, I can't call this angle angle B. So I have to use the three letters that make it up, and B has to be in the middle because it's the vertex. So the last one would be angle G, B, A, or I can say A, B, G. doesn't matter as long as the vertex is in the middle. The second question is name the size of angle 5. So let's locate angle 5, which is right here. So I'm going to redraw that for you. Here's angle 5. Okay, here's G, here's B, and here's E. So the sides, again, are the two points that make up the ray of the angle. So side GB is one side, okay, and also side EB, or it can be any order. It could be BG or BE, but as long as I use those two points. And the last one is to write another name for angle 6. So here's angle 6. So instead of 6, I can use the three, do you see? The three letters, E, B, D, that makes it as long as what, again, is in the middle? The vertex. So I can easily name it E, B, D. What's another way I can name it? I can reverse D and E. I can switch them. And I can also say angle D, B, E. But B has to always be in the middle. The final problem, oh, my apologies. Make sure for this one you remember that you're going to do page 35, number 1 through 3. Again, it's page 35, number 1, 2, 3. That's the um, extra problem that you need to do after this. This is our last problem. And basically when I drew this on my notes, I just drew a star, and then I erased in here. So, whichever way, whichever floats your boat that you want to draw the star. But don't forget to go ahead and write this down. And basically what it's asking us is to find angle GBH. I'm going to locate it so it's easy. And remember, this is always the vertex, so I can easily say that this is one angle. And then HCI. HCI. Now we don't know yet if they're equal, so instead of putting this curve tells me that it's equal. So you remember... Just on a side note, how when I have these lines right here and I mark them, this means that they are congruent. You can do the same thing with angles by merely doing this. Okay? And for example, this one is not equal to these, so I can just put 2. And then this could be 3. But in this case, this tells us that GBH and HCI are equal, so I'm going to keep it at 1. And if you have questions on that, we can go over that in class. But you'll see that in the homework, and just in case you get confused. So basically, it's telling me that this is equal to this, and it's also telling me that GBH is 2x plus 5 and 3x minus 10. So this is the information they give us, and they want us to find the actual measures. So they don't want us to find just x, but if we find x, we can plug it in to find the answer. So, but um, the one information critical is they tell us that these two are equal. So that means that I can substitute, I can replace. So basically, instead of GBH, I know that GBH is 2x plus 5. And also equal is 3x minus 10. Okay? Combine like terms and then solve. Do you understand why I put that there, that I'm equal? Because it says that these are equal, so that means whatever this is, it has to be the same number as this because their measure should be equal. So I set them equal to each other. Once I have an equal sign on problems, and you've seen them in algebra, once you have an equal sign, then you can solve. So the goal is to try to get them to have an equal sign. Now, there's no like terms to combine, so I'm going to start isolating the x. I'm going to bring the 2x to this side, so subtract 2x. 3x minus 2x gives me 1x, or I can just write x. 
Okay, and I just bring down the 5 and bring down a negative 10. Now I need to add 10 to both sides. This gives me 10 plus 5, which is 15 equals x. So that's my x, but it's not asking me for x, it's asking me to find the angle. The good thing is, because they're equal, if I find one, then I find the other. So in this case, um, if I just plug in 15 to either one, then I should get the right answer. So let's choose a top one. 2 times 15 plus 5. Okay? 2 times 15 is 30 plus 5, and so 30 plus 5 is 30. Five. And that should be the answer. If you're not sure if you did it right, you can always take it and um, put it in for the second one, and they should be the same exact answer. If they're not, then you've got the wrong x. So for your last problem on your notes, you should do page 36, number 7. Um, if it's a little bit difficult, don't worry, you can ask questions in class, but page 36, number 7 will be your last problem.